Hi, I'm Christopher Redmond and I'll should be showing you how to create a self-correcting test in Google Forms. For more info, go to bit.ly slash scqk12. Alright, first to begin with, you'll need to log into Google Docs and create a new spreadsheet. We'll name the spreadsheet self-correcting quiz. Next, rename this, the first sheet directions. Now we will create a new sheet and call this one. Now we'll call this one entry. Now go to tools, form, and create a form. This check will automatically put it in their email address if you have a Google Apps domain. If you do not have a Google Apps domain, the first question will be their email address. This is where the results will be emailed. Our next question will be the name of the person taking the tests. The first question to our test was when did Columbus sail the ocean blue? But for the following you can put in any of your own questions. And now we will make the rest of the questions for this five question quiz. Okay. Here is where the all the form info will be collected. There is your timestamp, email address, name, and your questions. These we will use to get not only the scores of the quizzes but to email them there. Now create a new tab named key. This is where the answers to the test will be. Alright, in A1 we will put question, in B1 we will put the answer, and in C1 we will put the points, total points earned. The first algorithm we'll be using is equals transpose. We will now get all the information from entry. So you have to put entry exclamation point to know it's from the entry sheet. And we will be needing the data from D1 to H1. Transpose will then sw switch the data so instead of being horizontal it will be vertical. And as you see in the video it is done so. Okay. Next, you will put in the actual answers to each question, putting in as A, B, C, or D. Next, in the points column, how many points each question is worth. Next, we will be creating a new sheet called Results. This is where all the results to the quiz will be. Our next algorithm will be equals sort. This will take all the names from entry. So we will have to type entry, exclamation point, and we'll need that data from A2 to C. For this, you, for, for this to work, you will have to have some data to work with. This is why when we first put in the algorithm, it came out blank. So we will now go through and take the, quest, the test a couple times as sample data. Now that there's data in entry it will show up in the results
So now when we type in our algorithms equals sort entry exclamation point A2 to C the timestamp of when Karen Kelly took the test will show up along with his email address. Now we will hide columns A and B to give it a less cl cluttered look. Our next alg algorithm will be again another transpose. This time we will be taking the data from the key sheet. So we will do key exclamation point and we will be taking the data from cells A2 to B. This will pull the questions from our key into the results so we can see which questions the person got right or wrong. Next we will be using a new algorithm called filter. This algorithm looks at looks a little different. We'll be using equals filter entry exclamation point D2 to D comma space entry exclamation point C2 to C equals C3 what this means is pull the data from the entry sheet D2 to D if the data from cells C2 to C is equal to C3. So it means take the data from D2 to D if the name of that person is equal to the name in C3. Now with the current algorithm we're taking the data that that person put into our results. But now with the current algorithm we're just pulling in their answer. Next we'll be pulling in what the letter that they answered with the equals left algorithm. But we want to go another step further and give them a point value. If they got it right give them 20 points but if they got it wrong give them zero well what happens if the teacher wants to give them a different point value for that question so instead of just giving them 20 points we want to take the point value that is given with a question in the key sheet so we will put in if they got it right give them the point value in key C2 for this question. If not, give them zero. Next we'll be adding conditional formatting for this column. So next in the conditional formatting we'll be making it so that if they got zero points so the text is exact is equal to zero make the background red. If it is greater than zero so they got the question right make it green which will easily show which questions were wrong, which questions were got had gotten wrong and which questions were right next we'll be using the drag feature in the google spreadsheets put your mouse on the little blue square in the bottom right corner make sure your cursor turns into crosshairs or this will not work when you drag it to the right it should pull the formula and change it so it works for all the other questions. Make sure you have the dollar signs in the right places in this formula or it will change the algorithm to be wrong. We only want certain factors in this algorithm changed, not all of them. Next we'll be creating a by student sheet so that you can see what each student answered on each question by each student. Next we'll be creating a validation for the list of students that took, had taken the quiz. We will be creating a list from the key sheet E2 to E25. So if you go to data and then validation it will pop up with this window. That was in the key sheet from cells E2 to E25. Make sure the allow invalid data box is unchecked. So as you can see, the two names John Smith and Kern Kelly did pop up in our list. Next we will be using the filter function 
We will be getting our results from the results sheet for the person in A2. And again, we'll be using the conditional formatting, the same as before. If the cell is empty, we want to keep the background white. If it is equal to zero, we want the background red. And if the cell can, is greater than zero, we want it green to show that they got it either right or wrong. Next, we'll be adding a new feature, pass or fail. So we'll be using the if algorithm again. So if C2 is greater than 69, then, which is represented by the comma, we put inside the cell pass, which we'll put in quotations so it knows because it is text. If not, which is represented by the next comma, put in the text fail which will be surrounded with quotations again because it is text. Next create or afterwards create a new sheet called by email. This is where this is the tab that will be emailing out all the results to the quiz. Our first formula will be a new algorithm called max. This means that the latest data that has come in will be put here. Cells A2 to A to come into this col and come into the A column. Next we'll have to go up to the numbers and make sure there's a time and a date since this is the unique identifier, the timestamp for each person. The next algorithm is a filter algorithm. We want to make sure that the data with the timestamp comes into the spreadsheet. So we'll be using the filter and we want the all the data from results B2 to D. We want to make sure that the timestamp in results A2 to A is equal to the timestamp in the sheet so that we get the right data. So with the timestamp the data of his email, his name, and his score for the test will be coming into this sheet. This will be emailed by a script that we will be showing next. So to insert the script into this spreadsheet, go to Tools and Script Editor. We, we will be naming this project Scores by Email. For the code to email out the scores, please go to bit.ly slash sqk12. When you go to that page, copy and paste this code into this window. Note, if you use a template provided, the script will already be in the script editor. So now we will have to add a trigger to the script. We want it to send the email from the spreadsheet on submit so that every time someone submits to this quiz it will be automatically emailed out. So now when we put our information again into this form it is automatically emailed to our email account with our score. For more information about the script go to bit.ly slash sqk12 if you like a copy of this template, there will be a link to it on our Bitly page. Thanks for watching. For more information about me, go to ChristopherRedmond.com. Special thanks to Dave McCollum from TechSmith for donating us a copy of Camtasia that was used in making this video.